start this vlog off in this really cute swimsuit. Love Shack Fancy just sent me their collab with Hurley. Just figured I'd show you guys how beautiful this is. You can find this on Love Shack Fancy's website. It's so cute. This is a vlog, but it's also like a whole like advice or explanation video. I don't even know what to call this. I'm just giving out my tips and tricks on how I glue up or I hate saying that, but my tips and tricks on how I glue up physically and mentally since quarantine. Let me go get my phone. I, I wrote some notes. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring me. You guys literally changed my life. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. So the class of choice that I took is designing your life for exercises on motivation and clarity. This class helped me in more ways than I can tell you guys. In these classes, I learned how to reflect on my life and understand what it really is that I want and don't want. That's so important when you're navigating your 20s. I went through some intentional reflection and visioning that were designed to help me feel inspired, motivated, and to create clarity in my life. There's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, on Skillshare, you can discover what you can make with classes for every skill or level. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's live classes. You'll get to experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along with other members. You get to connect with fellow creatives and enter a community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. I have to tell you guys, I do miss college because I miss that sense of community and having classmates and learning new insights. This is something that I definitely have been missing, so I feel like it helped make me the person I am right now. I do have good news. The first 1,000 of you to click the link in my description box gets the month of Skillshare for free. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Let's get back into the video. It's not just a diet change. It's not just um, a fashion change. It's not just coloring my hair. It is a lifestyle change that I made, and that's what changed everything for me so if you guys have a journal or if you guys have anything you want to like take notes on feel free it's not that deep but at the end of the day it really like making this lifestyle change like literally saved my life so if right now you're just like super unmotivated and hopeless which, which is what i was feeling i was feeling like hopeless i think my tips and tricks can help i just want to put out this disclaimer that i will be talking about weight at one point in this video so if that is a trigger to you please exit out of this video i struggled through bdd i think i touched on that on my plastic surgery ruined my face video but i battled through bdd like a majority of my life and i know so many people that i love so much that have had disordered eating and i would hate for this video to be a cause of that for any of you guys so if you guys get triggered by the talk of food, seeing someone eat food, what I eat in a day, we're talking about diets and all that stuff, please exit out of this video. My first point, and that is number one, that is to love yourself. That's the first thing that I changed in my entire lifestyle change because I grew up with bullies at school, not the healthiest household. I brushed on that earlier on on my channel. So it was really hard to love myself to begin with and I seeked validation with relationships and friends. Just, I didn't have a healthy mindset on how to love myself. And then I got into this career, being an influencer where not everyone likes you and people are not scared to be vocal about that and pick you apart into little tiny pieces, like dissect you. and. I just got so wrapped up into that, pleasing other people before myself, how people think of me. I got so wrapped up into all that that I literally lost sense of who I was. I thought of myself how everyone else thought of myself. I didn't see myself as a bomb ass bitch who's doing her thing. I didn't love myself. If you picture you're in a relationship with yourself, like say yourself is two people, would you like how they treat each other in the relationship? I like just realized one of my best years of my life was 2015 and the difference between 2015 and all the other years that I don't favor is that I loved myself in 2015. So I woke up one morning and I was like, I wanna love myself again. So loving yourself does not start with the exterior guys. It, it's all internal work. And when you start loving yourself internally here, everything changes out here too. So I guess you can say, when I started loving myself and treating myself really sweet, like giving myself self care and date nights with myself and talking to myself, like literally talking to myself like we're dating, I started liking how I looked on the outside and I'm not afraid to say that. The more I started treating myself with kindness and love and the way that I would treat friends, the way I used to spoil friends like it was nothing, I started treating myself that way and all of a sudden, I looked loved. 
and it's because I don't need validation from other people to love myself. I could love myself in a room with like nothing. Like if I have four walls around me and no one else in there to gas me up or tell me how cute I look or whatever, I would still love me because the relationship that I have worked on so hard with myself is very sweet. So yeah, look, work on inner work. I can't tell you the amount of times, and I don't wanna get into like diet culture and stuff, but the amount of times that I have been like, I'm gonna eat this, this, and this, and this, and I'm gonna do these workouts, and then I'll look the way I want. It's, you can't have that mindset. You can't be like, oh, here's inspiration on what I wanna look like, and I'm gonna look like that. That's not how it works. You have to love yourself in here. The second thing I wanna talk about <laughs> is caffeine. Or should I just say coffee in general? I know I've been talking about this a lot, like on Instagram, those of you who have not been watching me don't know that I cut out coffee. Um, the moment I was like, I wanna love you to myself. And I know how coffee makes me feel. Coffee makes me feel anxious, jittery. It induces anxiety. And it just overall doesn't make me feel good. It also makes me crash like really hard when the coffee wears off. And during that crash, I'm most likely to have negative thoughts. I noticed I have like an upper and then I hit like a down, like a spiral and then I'm down, like mentally I'm down, energetically I'm down. And then I start craving really bad foods when the coffee crash goes away. That's where I made the connection that me and coffee just don't go together. I'm going in to get my tea. I don't know what I'm gonna come back with, but should be something good. This is a watermelon cucumber tea and this is a double immunity shot. And I actually started seeing this clinic and they have centers all around the Lehigh Valley where I'm from. My best friend Kenny started going there for a lifestyle change. And I guess I kind of followed his lead because I noticed how much happier he was. And I'm like, well, since I wanna take this lifestyle change head on, this was after I had found out that I was pre-diabetic and I wanted to take my life it back into my hands. I felt like I kept living to please other people to the point where I wasn't eating right. I wasn't active. I wasn't, I was, I was just looking online. I have all these autoimmune diseases and I don't want to touch base on all them. I feel like I talk about my autoimmune diseases enough. But one thing I will say was I was definitely very pre-diabetic because of my polycystic ovarian syndrome, my PCOS. And I'm not going to get into all that. There's so many YouTube videos about my autoimmune disease. I started going to this clinic so that I could get my cycle back because throughout all the weight gain and stress, I lost my period. Hey guys, so I wanna let you guys know, cause it's crazy that I'm editing this and this just happened. Sorry if this is TMI, but we're gonna talk about my cycle here. I just got my period today, like right now, without the horrible PMS symptoms that I usually get. So basically my period was always, and has always been super irregular. And then after I started going to this clinic, I started going to this clinic the week before we filmed Nikki and Gabby Jersey Shore. That was like my first week, like practicing all the things they told me to with my diet and activity. May, June, and now July, I have a regular period that comes on the exact same day. This month, the month of July, I had no PMS symptoms. It literally just showed up on time. I forgot that that was like my new day. As someone with PCOS, I never know like what day it's coming. So now I have a regular day, which is awesome. I have that. I had no PMS symptoms, which is those of you who have PCOS understand or premenstrual dysphoric disorder. When you're super stressed out and you have a negative mindset and you don't love yourself, there's so many hormones that can like mess up your hormones. There's stress hormones. I don't know if you've heard of that. Cortisol is the number one like stress hormone that I had to just get rid of. This year, I'm just gonna focus on doing videos that I wanna do. I used to do them for you guys, not because it made me happy. You know, if something does well, why would you stop doing it? But that's what drove me into the ground. Anything that could increase my cortisol levels, I've like completely cut out and I become more selfish. Which brings me to the third thing. When I say be selfish, I don't mean it in like the bad way. I mean it as in like, Start saving money for yourself. Stop trying to get on all your friends' levels when they're drinking. You don't have to. I, I, I'm sure you people pleasers can understand, like when everyone's like raging and having a good time in your 20s, 
you want to get on everyone's level. Well, I went through a lot this year and I didn't know what else to lean on, honestly. These years are so pivotal. So whatever lifestyle you set for yourself in your 20s most likely determines your 30s. And what you do in your 30s determines your 40s. And what you do in your 40s determines your 50s. I felt like I was running myself thin, like trying to please everyone else but myself. If all my friends were getting drunk, I was trying to get on that level too, instead of being like, hey body, I wanna take care of you. You don't have to keep up with everyone else. I have been learning how to say no to plans if I'm tired. Some friends like are like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And I don't wanna make them upset. So I'm like, oh yes, I'm gonna go do that. But in this new lifestyle change, if I'm tired or if I just wanna have a night to myself and watch a movie, I haven't been afraid to be like, I'm staying in. And yeah, I've been getting a lot more sleep by being more selfish. I used to have the most unhealthy mindset. I used to be so busy with work. I would never put time to myself aside to the point where I only had the option to go through fast food drive throughs and I had no time for physical activity. My physical activity, my theory is if it's not fun and it doesn't make me happy, then don't do it. So the physical activity that I do that makes me happy is taking very long walks and looking around at nature to my favorite music or swimming. No method to my swimming, literally just, or jumping on a trampoline or going to like one of those trampoline parks with Colin. Once a week, I'll go to a gym and do the lifting and the setups. Um, but if I'm not having fun with it, I just leave, I get bored. I don't like gyms and I try so hard to like them. So I think that's definitely made a difference because I used to just literally sit around on my phone. Sitting around was like the worst thing that I used to do for myself. The next thing I wanna talk about is setting boundaries. Now this can go from anything with work to relationships to food. Now with work, I cut myself off every day at a certain time. I'm not gonna give my work hours to you guys because that's just me being selfish. You know, with work, I just had to set my certain hours. I also learned how to set boundaries with my privacy, setting boundaries with my sleep schedule. And with diet, I had to cut out all sugar, which is something someone who is pre-diabetic should do. Someone who has PCOS is insulin resistant. When I started romanticizing the little things in life, life definitely became more fun. So. I've been spending a lot more time outside. I've realized when I'm around nature or water specifically, whether it's a pool, a creek, an ocean, a lake, a river, when I'm around anything like water, my spirits are so lifted. Have you ever read a book and the author goes into like the little details, like when the main character brushes her hair and the thought that crosses her mind when she brushes her hair or that simple lunch she made herself or the type of outfit she wore that you would have never put together. When I read books, I get so much more insight on how to romanticize my life. If you look at everything as a big picture, you're never gonna be happy. You have to take every second of your life, step by step by step, to realize how beautiful the gift of life is, no matter the good, the bad, the ugly, the horrible things that happen that you literally cannot control. They don't matter when you look at the beautiful little things all around you, like the deer that constantly sit in front of me as I'm filming here. <laughs> very insulin resistant so if i eat sugar my body does not know how to metabolize it therefore i won't feel my best slash look my best so i just completely cut out sugar and i'm not trying to like shove diet culture down your guy's throat because other than that like i don't diet like i just don't have sugar i want to live long and i want to live my best life and i want to have the healthiest lifestyle that i can which also feeds into the other thing that i cut out which was filler like face filler, Botox. I've seen so many doctors and a lot of them say, when you have autoimmune issues and you insert something into your body like implants or an IUD or filler, when you already have like autoimmune stuff going on, your body is like, what is going on? And it swells up because it tries to like fight it. I don't wanna put like foreign substances in my body cause I can clearly see my body is looking more and more like it was and that was before I got carried away with all like the fillers and stuff. Here and there I'll use like the PDO threads at KP Aesthetics. Um, if you guys don't know what PDO threads are, just look it up on Google because I just don't feel okay or comfortable explaining all this medical terminology. But that's what I've been doing for like lips and like, you know, lifting and all that stuff. Nothing wrong with surgery, nothing wrong with filler. My body just reacts really weirdly to that stuff. So the next thing I wanna talk about is acceptance. We're gonna go through ups and downs and falls. Don't sink with that fall. Stand back up again. 
look at what has happened in the past as the past. The past doesn't exist anymore and the future doesn't exist anymore. The only thing that exists is the present and you have to accept the past, but don't let the past be your present. So yeah, that has definitely helped me a lot. And last but not least, what I'm gonna talk about, the art of manifestation. It can be an art. It, it could be looked at as something beautiful that you could make for yourself, but you have to be so careful when it comes to manifesting because it's real. Manifestation can be a tool. It's a tool, like you're literally making an order for yourself. Um, like you're placing your own order for your life. I have a journal and I write things down that I'm going to accomplish because I'm, I am. Like the future doesn't exist yet. So who says, who says I can't do anything? That's, that's the mindset you have to have. Like the future doesn't exist. Get a journal or something and get intention candles. This is Lex's creation. This is, I think the fortune candle. God, they smell so good. They smell like white chocolate. Ugh. It smells like lush kind of, but it's literally a lush for candles. Um, there's a bunch of intention candles. There's a self-love candle, there's a confidence candle, there's a wishing candle, there's a fortune candle, there's a good vibes candle, there's positivity candles. I will link her down below. But when you have these little journaling nights, take a cozy bath, put some bubble bath, put some salts. There's such thing as energy and whatever you speak, you will literally speak it into existence. So that's why it could be bad if like you're really negative and you're like, oh, this is gonna happen, like it will. Like the future does not exist. So be very affirmative about what you wanna do in your life. Everyone who's successful in this world is human, just like you. But yeah, my Skillshare classes help me so, so much with a lot of these realizations. Like this isn't just coming out of nowhere. Know that I love you guys so much. It took a lot of work to get to where I am mentally right now. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to regress and you know, fall back a little, but you know, you're human. You always get right back up, I promise. Um, that's life, so I love you, and I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I definitely enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next fancy vlog. Bye!